EasyRobot.com Personal Robotics for everyone. Hey there, I'm DJ Shirts. Steve had a really good idea and said, Steve, I want to make an, a, a computer. So Steve said, I can do that. So they developed something which you all know as this, the Macintosh. Now what Steve and Steve created was not specifically a computer. They created a revolution. They created an entire product line and a new platform where people who understood what a computer actually was in movies, they brought it to an actual desktop where anyone can interact with it. And now we have them in our hands, in your pockets, they're all over the place. So what I'm going to talk about is how I got to where I am right now and what I did to get here. These are some of the companies I worked for in the past. And they all had different influences on my life and my career to develop something. This is a robot that I had built. And I built this out of an old toy. And the concept of this robot was just to take a toy, add some parts to it, and develop something. It was kind of fun. This is another guy. This is a toy from 1984. This is called the Omnibot, made by a company called Tommy. Or Tommy. And uh, the concept between this toy is right where the centerpiece, where it's missing, you used to have a tape deck. In 1984, the idea of programming wasn't microcontrollers and computers and RAM like we have now. What you would do is you put this cassette tape in, use a remote control. When you drive the robot around, it would play a tone on the cassette. So when you played the cassette back, those tones would be received by the little tiny processor inside and allow it to replay what you had just done. So you can just drive it around, put it back in the same spot, press play, it does the exact same thing again. Pretty ingenious from 1984. So what I've done is taken apart, take these old toys, add new stuff to them, and the phrase we use is teaching old toys new tricks. Hmm. This is Teddy Rockspin. So for those of you who are old enough to know this one, um, don't show the video to your kids if you actually do find this one, because I start off by cutting off his head. <laughs> and I put servos into his head, into his mouth, into his eyes and his ears. And he can move around his arms, and now he actually interacts like the real Teddy Rockspin. This is where everything began, where my career actually started as a roboticist. So I was building robots for fun, like you just saw. And I was sitting in, at, at my camp, well, you guys call them cat cottages or cabins out here, and I'm from Ontario. And I had my feet up, and I was building this robot, and this man, my grandfather, who was reading one of the magazines I was featured in, he uh, looked over and he said, oh, teach me how to build one of these robots. And I said, God, it's hard. I mean, that's what I've been struggling with. Until this day, all I've been doing was getting anywhere between 10 to 100 to 500 emails a day of people saying, how do I build your robots? Because my, my YouTube videos were you know, in the hundreds of thousands, and everybody would say, wow, this is really cool. These guys take old toys and making robots. So when he said that to me, something was right about this day. I sat back, and everything just kind of came together. And I thought, hey, maybe I should try to devote some time and help people build robots. I mean, it is going to be the next technology. I went through a bunch of different versions of this concept. And it goes like this. And what you see at the top right is a product and a platform I created for people, not roboticists, not hobbyists, not and university students and NASA. And we have a whole bunch of people all internationally around the world. And I'm going to show you some of the things that these people are building with the platform I created and why I built it and how experimentation came into play. First thing I did was I, after I got everything done and figured out what I wanted to do, if you break this, I wanted the chip to be replaceable. So you can pop the chip off, put a new chip on, and that's it. The module on the top, as you see, is a Bluetooth module, but you can swap it up with Wi-Fi, so you get further distance. You can swap it up with XP or Synapse, and you get the two kilometers range. This is where my first version, I was sitting up one night, and I came up with this really good idea, and I spent maybe three days, four days, experimenting trying to figure out how I'm going to make it so people can build a robot without having to know how to program. And because when you think of a robot, all the computer parts are inside of it. So how do you program to put stuff inside of a chip? Well, people like me know how to do that, but not everyone does. So you do not use a computer. And you use a computer to point and click. So what I said was, maybe I can make this Wally -E robot remote controlled by somebody in a different house, someplace else. So I was talking to my friend at MSN, and I said, here. And I sent her a web link, and she was able to drive my robot around in the dining room. And that was proof. Wow, I got something I can actually work with. So the concept was, let's take old toys, add this platform I created, and make it come to life. And all my ideas come in the shower. So that's one of the things about experimentation. I sit there and I stand in the shower for hours. That's actually me. <laughs> this is what I created. So originally it was this thing with a DLL file, and you say DLL, and some of you guys are like, yeah, I'm a programmer. But everyone else is like, what? So it's like uh, taking a bunch of code, putting it inside of another piece of thing that requires more code. That's not going to help anyone build robots. So I created this thing called Easy Builder. 
And it's a software package that communicates with this platform, this hardware platform credit, which allows people, anyone from the ages of like 10 to the 75, to create controls and add them all together and control your robot. There's a voice recognition control, there's a soundboard, there's a joystick, there's all these things, and there's hundreds of these controls. And you can add them all together and you make your robot come to life. So I kind of experimented with a bunch of different things. What does a robot need to do? So I started watching a lot of movies, Doctor Who, obviously, and uh, you know, Lost in Space, a lot of old 80s movies are the best to watch. What do people expect of robots? Well, they want to talk to them, they want to control them. So I also added Wii control support, joystick support. I made it very graphical. And then and over here in, the, in the, the left, you see some robots that are kind of flying around. I didn't make those. What I figured out was, if these are already Wi-Fi enabled, Maybe my software can connect to them, so people don't have to use the platform or credit. They can just buy a robot at Toys R Us, bring it home, use my software, and they can control the robot and they can do something you couldn't do before. So they can talk to it, they can join the control it. Mobile support, camera support, so you can do vision tracking. S the sensors down here, kind of, I don't want to get into those, but those are distance sensors, so how, how, how it sees distances from things that are farther away. Servos are uh, motors, but they're motors you can actually assign an angle to. So my arm, if I had a servo, would be able to move in specified positions. And then easy cloud is something I'm not gonna have time to talk about today. <laughs> you know, one question I get asked the most is, when people interact with my robots, they right away see, and they go, wow, it, it, it can see me, it understands me. Yes, I do have things for facial tracking, I do have things for motion tracking and color tracking, and I didn't have a way for a robot to understand a specific object. It's very difficult for computers to do, it's a lot of processing. These things are just not capable of doing other things when it's just doing that. So I came up with this idea of a very simple, four black and white images. You can take these images, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this later out in the, uh, the atrium, and you can put them around your home, or you can put them on objects, and the robot can detect the different shapes. Now, I talked about the robots that I already currently support. So you all outside, you'll see the Brookstone Rover, which is in the far right. The flying robot out here used to be a remote-controlled flying robot that you would be able to use from your iPhone or your iPad, and you'd have to literally go like this to keep it up. What my software does now is it allowed it to be able to actually take the telemetry data from the sensors and I stabilize it and it just hovers. And it can follow balls. You can play monkey in the middle. You can put a ball on the ground and kick it and the robot will follow it. And the Roomba, so you can control your Roomba, which is actually pretty fun because everybody has one of those. So, for an educational perspective, I wanted robots to be able to be not controlled by just one user. I wanted it to be controlled by multiple. So I made it so you can connect up to 512 users to one robot. So in this example, I have two, two uh, example users connected to one controller, and then I have another person on the internet who's connected to that controller too. So you can have one robot, and you have a classroom, maybe five or six groups, and you can have one robot, one group of students can work on the head, so they can be motion tracking, color tracking, another group of students can be working on the arm, another group of students can be working on motion. So they can all be doing something separate on one, one robot. So it's kind of like multitasking, but for robots. So this is the 3D glasses, and they have an accelerometer. So what I've done is I've hooked my software up to this. So when you move your head, you can actually control the robot. So when your robots, when you're looking like this, the robot looks, and you look up, the robot looks up. Now there's a camera in the robot's head, so you get to see in here what the robot gets to see. So you should become the robot. This is what I'm working on right now. I started this idea, and I got this walking robot humanoid that didn't come with a very good brain. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I can add my support to it like I've been doing. I started doing that. And then all of a sudden, someone said to me, this is more experimentation, said, hey, since you got the glasses, can we put like a laser or infrared sensor on in some place, maybe two of them, then you can sit there at a desk and we can have them walk around the house and play real life 3D games, like first person shooters? Awesome. So I've been working on this weekend. So I actually haven't stopped in a couple of days. So <laughs> you can see this guy outside. What's going to be neat in the next week or two, you're going to see it, and we're going to actually have another video coming out where we're going to have two people sitting at a desk, and they're going to have little laser cannons on these things, and we're going to be wearing our glasses, and we're going to be playing real-life robot first-person shooters. It's really cool. I'm very excited about that. So, inspiration, aha moment, eurekas, those are all the things of the past. Those are the things that I developed before. Now, what leads my development going forward? Where is my product going? Where's my platform going? Well. It all comes from this thing called the EZ community. And then we are now a research facility. We actually take that money and we research and we create new functions and new features into the software, which people get for free after that. 
so they can run it at home, and they can continue for the rest of their life, be part of something called the easy community. So rather than going to school, you're actually paying us to go to school for you. It's kind of how it works, and you get to actually use it. So we package it all, make it all pretty, and put it into a nice graphical interface so anybody can use it. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that people have been building recently. We have thousands of users and thousands of robots, because everyone who gets this thing builds a robot within the first couple days of getting it. This is Phoebe and her dad. She's nine. They like Wally, -E, so they decided to build a Wally -E out of wood. They've been working on this for the past couple of weeks. Pretty exciting stuff. This is uh, Lloyd. Lloyd is 13 years old, and uh, here's his robot in the, the bottom left here, and this is actually a screenshot of the YouTube video. And if you were to watch this video, he goes from the beginning to the end, and a 13-year-old, he makes a robot that you can talk to it, and it does things. It's actually his like, little friend, driving on his house, and he's 13. This is neat, because one of those robots I built, you can tell because his head's not on right, it's kind of slanted. And this robot here was built by a couple from a uh, daughter and father from Okotoks. They came to my house because they were so excited, and they said, we want to show you our, the robot we built. These are almost the same robots, but they're built by two different people, totally different inspirations, and they just did it over a weekend. This is a 300 pound, six, six foot tall robot that's currently being built. That just, the guy just started a couple days ago, Lost in Space Robot. Mm. And it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm really excited about this. He's got the hands down here with actually opening and closing, and um, up there you can see the batteries that are running it, it's big car batteries. It's going to be quite amazing. So these are some of the pictures of the robots that are being built right now. One of the most important stories I want to tell you about the people that are building robots. A 65-year-old man, and he said to me when he bought it, he sent me an email, and he said, I got hurt, I got a stroke, I don't have very good use of my, my right side of my body, and uh, I want to get into robotics. Help me out. Okay, it's what I'm trying to do. So I gave him the kit, and uh, within about two months, he built his first robot. 65 with no prior experience in computers so unfortunately this past weekend Lloyd had another stroke so Lloyd now has very little use of his right body but our entire easy community has been working together to help him build a robot arm mm. can you imagine this he's gonna have a robot real working arm attached to his body or on the desk I'm not sure there's a lot of different ideas so this just happened in the past couple days so what's happening is and the reason why I showed the, you know, the Steve Jobs and Apple thing at the very beginning is because there's a huge community and a huge technology of people out there that are actually embracing robotics. It's not just myself that's providing these things for people, but it's a new technology that you're going to be able to see in the next couple of years. You have to actually accept it. We've had vacuums drive around, but that's not it. It's going to change. And it's not just going to be about robot pets. There's going to be things like, you know, especially with our, our grandfather, our grandparents, and our, and, our, and our parents who are getting a lot older, maybe something to pick up rags off the ground. Maybe it's just something that um, can mop the floor, mop get in the corners better than the Roomba can. So there's going to be a lot of really interesting robots coming out. And the idea of what I'm working on is to build a platform to allow everyone to get that idea out of here into actuality. So you can maybe turn this into a product, and maybe you can actually start changing the world. And I think that's where my Eureka moments come from, and that's what my passion is. And that's it. Thank you very much.